Good morning and welcome to Converge to Accelerate 2019. My name is Tori Sinai, founder, partners of Digital Health and publisher of conference host journals, Blockchain and Healthcare Today and Telehealth and Medicine Today. Our portfolio identifies these two sectors as driving the future of global health, access, and affordability. Thank you for coming this morning as community stakeholders, enriching the lives of others. Our market provides comfort and cure in a business we call healthcare. Our journal editorial missions assist building a credible body of work that validates use, adoption, and scale of blockchain and telehealth in value-based care, bringing peer-reviewed, multidisciplinary, evidence-based solutions as Blockchain Task Force. Thank you, Hims, and the uh, Connected Care uh, team for having us here today and collaborating with us, and the IEEE Standards Association as well. Uh, there is a new IK that was just announced earlier this month on the harmonization of technology and remote clinical trials, and we are working uh, with that group in um, that uh, work stream. Um, well, I would actually like for board members here today, would board members raise their hands, those in the audience? Thank you. Um, these notable global experts and leaders believe in our editorial mission, market and community purpose, and give their time to build a product that benefits the healthcare community. Um, thank you, board members, honestly, um, for your expertise and selfless volunteerism. We are here today to prove how your innovation in this health technology revolution is advancing economies public policy and debate where our health data will soon be earned and shared 
on a global scale. I ask you to ask yourselves what role purpose-driven social impact, humanizing technology, and consumer and provider empowerment may bring to your businesses and business models. Keep value at the core of policy and systems. Initiatives educating patients to be better purveyors of their own health and create an ecosystem where they become shareholders and owners, creating models that transform toward unity and equity, alleviating cost and burdens. You each have an opportunity today, not only to share knowledge, but to converge to advance the ultimate borderless expansion of healthcare. This is your opportunity to change care around the globe. You must champion the arduous task of action, the courage to change, embrace transparency and social responsibility, and bear the risk of investment and leadership. We must satisfy and rebalance workforce, health consumer, and shareholder in a new era of health and care. Today, show the world the heart of the United States healthcare and innovation at Congress. 2019. Let's do it. In the spirit, I'm assuming someone's working on these slides here because we have a whole day of presentations. <laughs> As an aside, um, in the spirit of generosity and global goodwill, um, we're featuring two charities today participating in, in Con B2X. United Hatzla is a global Israeli-based charity that saves lives in under three minutes. Co-founders Ellie Beer and Mark Burson, yes, that Mark Burson, um, have led United Hatzla's 5,000 trained volunteer medics answering 1,500 emergency calls a day, saving 200 lives a day in Israel. The effort is blind to all except humanity. Uh, the model is now being adopted around the world, including two pilots in the United States, in New Jersey. Um, you will hear more about those pilots and United Hatzla's efforts from Joe Crystal, who is uh, United Hatzla's advisor, speaking later today. The second charity is the Boston Debate League, quite near and dear to us, located in Boston. The Boston Debate League uses the power of evidence-based debate to create a transformative learning experience for students denied educational opportunities. Programs are tailored to address inequities, creating an inclusive learning community where all are welcome and young people use critical thinking and problem solving for informed, empowered leadership. Executive Director Mike Wasserman is moderating our data privacy debate today, and do please connect with Joe or Mike over the course of the day to make a donation, and thanks so very much. Uh, I was going to put up a sponsor slide, <laughs> Um, imagine that sponsor slide is on the screen right now, and I am going to thank Boehringer Engelheim Canada, who I know is here, NASCO, we took a photo earlier, IEEE SA, Compro Worldwide, iWorker Innovations, PCH Alliance and Connected Health, they're part of the HIMSS Association, Haven Health, and Trader News Network, 
the virtual care consultant, Zoom, and all our friends. Thank you so very much. Um, we will begin our day now, and I will introduce our first <laughs> guest, special guest this morning. Uh, her name is Teuta Sahatia, uh, Consulate General of the European Republic of Kosovo in New York City. Ambassador Sahatia was a member of the parliament representing the Democratic League of Kosovo and served as chairman of the Parliamentary Committee on European Integration. During her tenure in parliament, she served as vice chair of the Parliamentary Caucus of the Democratic League of Kosovo, president of the bipartisan Women's Parliamentary Caucus, and first vice chair of the Parliamentary Committee on Economic Development. She was an entrepreneur launching a telecom business after working as a maintenance engineer and software programmer in a textile company in Kosovo. She holds a Master of Science in Electronic Engineering from the University of Pristina in Kosovo. Earlier this year, she led a delegation of US businesses to build innovation and investment between the US and Kosovo, of which I was an honored member. My family is from Kosovo, and the reason I can pronounce her name is because I speak Albanian. Um, and have committed my company, Partners in Digital Health, along with collaborators from MUSC, Telehealth Center of Excellence, and Cromford Health, to help launch educational and innovation efforts to assist Kosovo in a reinvigorating affordable health system using telehealth and blockchain. It is my honor to introduce a woman that many in Kosovo admire for her courage, curiosity, leadership, daring, and caring. Please welcome Ambassador Deunta Sapa. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your kind words and thank you for becoming a part of Kosovo Health and Kosovo Businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very honored to be today here with you and have possibility to tell you a little bit about my country and to have possibility to listen to your presentations hoping to link some few with Kosovo as story is already present uh, there. So I think you have to ask her whether to come or not. <laughs> um, I'm three years here as ambassador and head of uh, Kosovo Mission New York. And when I mention Kosovo, I have two different answers or uh, any questions. Where Kosovo is. Some of them don't know where Kosovo is. Some of them remember Kosovo from the war in 1999. I tried to tell them that my country is a tiny country, the youngest in the world. It is the southeastern part of Europe, near Macedonia, Albania, Montenegro, and Serbia. For someone that also doesn't ring a bell, and I said, somewhere near Greece and Italy. But Greece and Italy are far. Kosovo from 99 has changed a lot. But today's Kosovo we cannot talk or mention without mentioning the time that we passed. During the 90s, from 1989 to the beginning of the war of 1999, Kosovo was passing through a very difficult time, through a time of apartheid, where the majority of population, 90% of population are Albanian were kicked out of schools, of education system, and of medical system. And doctors and nurses, for a very short time, became jobless. In 1999, when the war was over, the medical facilities were devastated, and equipment was taken away. 
So after the liberation, where I cannot not mention America and in each and every my speech, to thank America and to thank progressive forces who helped liberation of Kosovo in giving us chance to be alive. 20 years ago, I was a refugee. With my four little children, from four to 10, passed through the river and through mountains to Albania. And today was a day that I couldn't imagine 20 years ago. Representing my country and being in front of you with the thankfulness and the possibility to take to talk about Kosovo of today. Kosovo today is a developing country. It is not any more poor country. It is a country that gave the chance, that gave the chance to be alive, gave the chance to give the added value to the world's sport, to the world education, to the world health. <laughs> Immediately after the war, there were some good decisions that have been made. In Kosovo, there was a decision to bring to the devastated infrastructure to bring the internet. So the cities that was not connected to each other started to be connected through the internet issues. Immediately after that, the academy, Cisco Academy, brought together many of young people to learn about the internet. Today, Kosovo is the first country in the world per capita having the biggest number of engineers who are educated and certified in world most renowned certifications. Kosovo is a country where half the population is younger than 30 years old. It is a country where speaking of four, five, six languages is not making you something very special. I speak only six, and there are a lot of others who speak six or more. Kosovo is a country where English and German are very widely spoken, where internet and businesses who are working with internet and giving the, 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 the the work to European market and starting with American market are growing and becoming very strong part of our economy. So, how to link internet and health? I think today, linking internet and linking every other thing is not any more things to be mentioned. It is not imaginable anymore to live isolated. Everything is interlinked to each other, not only among the, the, the country, but also all over the world. In Kosovo, after 99, the health system was pretty scattered and devastated. In 2002, there was the initiative of international virtual e-hospitals to create the Kosovo Center, Telemedicine Center in Kosovo. It immediately connected six centers. And through that telemedicine center, we are today connected to the whole world. We are linked with more than 62 universities and medical centers in 20 countries. There are around a year 640 broadcast educational activities. There are more than 150 <coughs> lectures and more than 3,000 patients who are treated per year helping the telemedicine. The telemedicine is uh, telemedicine center of, of Kosovo. In fact, today we linked a lot of associations, a lot of universities, associations of anesthesiologists, biomedical professionals, chemotherapists, blood transfusion, center for continuing nursing education, a part of Ministry of Health. Institute of Public Health, the, the K4 Medical uh, Battalion, <coughs> and many, many other uh, institutions who are linked with the uh, telemedicine center in Kosovo. The next step that needs to be made in Kosovo, in fact, is going to the next level and bringing blockchain and new technologies to the medicine. And I'm very thankful to Tori that was a part of the business delegation that came to Kosovo. And today we have also the blockchain and telemedicine uh, in Kosovo 
to link with our professionals and broaden the, the services that telemedicine have inside the Kosovo. Kosovo is linked uh, with Albanian Telemedicine Center since we speak the same language and it's, uh, it's uh, easier to communicate, but uh, knowing the uh, English language and other languages we are today linked with uh, many research centers and universities that help Kosovo. I want to conclude this uh, telling you that Kosovo is a good part of the world to be there, to come with your businesses, to come with your organizations. It's a very Western and pro-American country. It's a country where your business immediately can be linked with the region, with European Union, and with all over the world, thanking very good infrastructure. Kosovo is more than 88% of its uh, uh, territory and of its uh, families are linked to internet, making it far best in the region and not comparable, even more better than many of European countries. So I would be glad to welcome you to the next mission of businesses and in organizations to, to bring you to Kosovo. Thank you for having me here. It was an honor to be here and I wish you a lot of success in this conference. The 2019 Converge to Accelerate conference is brought to you by IEEE, the world's largest technical professional organization for the advancement of technology. Bollinger Ingelheim, passionately working to improve healthcare. NASCO, advancing digital health technology.